I'm gonna be iron cladinated also. Because we're gonna play a man with demonic strength and possibly demonic money. Oh my. Well, I'd say if anything is ripe for a 250 gold start, it's a formation like this with two early stores. Definitely has some potential. Ooh, 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 I like this path in particular here. Many upgrades, many elites. You can even avoid the burning elite if necessary. Go the coward's path. So I'm thinking something like this. Taking 18 damage to start is pretty tough, but you can recover a lot of that with Ironclad's Burning Blood if your early combats go well. Oh, man. <laughs> Love that joke from Virtual 256 while I was away. Did you know that the first sport mentioned in the Bible was baseball? It starts out in the big inning. I could only shake my head in sorrow at that. Let's take two more on purpose here. Kind of had to trade damage against the Jawworm. Usually if your attacks aren't blocking for the full amount, it's not worth doing. Also, the draw order just got us really punished here. So we take, unfortunately, 12 that I can't avoid. Sad. Very sad. But that's Jawworm for you. Sometimes Jawworm just does a bunch of damage. There's nothing you can do about it. Battle Trance very early. Hmm. Card draw. Armaments can also be reasonable. Well, well, well. What have we got here? Hand of Greed, huh? That guy asks, if you don't fight all your early easy pool fights in Act 1, do any of them carry over to Act 2? No. No, even if you only do a single normal combat in Act 1, which is the minimum, it doesn't have any effect on Act 2. Could go double Hand of Greed. I like that line. Or Hand of Greed plus uh, Pendiv. So it's an on-sale Impervious here. Or a Panic Button, which is basically Impervious but free. Ah. Although I don't see why you would, why would, you would use two Hand of Greeds. Hand of Greed this early can be a ton of cash for Ironclad. It's also a pretty good attack card. So I think it puts us on a really successful path overall. Good against the uh, slime boss at the end of the act, too. So I'm thinking it's Hand of Greed and either card removal and a super block card or Hand of Greed and Pendib. And there's definitely nothing wrong with just Hand of Greed and Pendib. Let's do that. Simple, effective, powerful. Every tenth attack we play is doubled in damage. And immediately there's something vaguely resembling a payoff. Wouldn't actually call it a payoff. Kill with a hand agreed where possible to get the bonus money. True Grit, Blood for Blood, and Clash. I could be convinced maybe to add a True Grit. Blood for Blood is good against different bosses than this one.
of the oncoming storm. Thanks for seven months of support. Glad to have you back. Glad to have you back. Let's see. Can I make a dad joke based on the name of the user who requested said dad joke? Sure, it could. I'll take a Trugret. Trugret is block and a random exhaust. Can be nice for stalling in fights or just thinning out the deck in general. I think we can get all of our health back in this fight, too. Strike first. Okay, so we got some of that health back. Still no potions, though. And this is a meager set of cards. We're going to have to hope that we get a potion and something decent from this combat. Uh, or else we're not going to be fighting the Burning Elite. This won't cut it. I guess Warcry is vaguely okay for setting up Hand of Greed. I don't think it's a card I want before Gremlin Up, though. Skip all these. This is an easy fight, at least. Triple defend? i do it. Let's see if I remember that. Hand agreed, true bit? <clears throat> yeah, because I don't want to delete the hand agreed, of course. Same play. Wow, this has worked out oddly well with the draw order here. Look at that. Uh, strike once, so we set the pendib to six. Or I could try to go slower here. Set it a little higher. I think I'm just going to take my money and run. We do get a potion, but it's not a very good potion. We do get an impervious or a carnage. Not much need for a carnage when we've got the hand degrade. It basically does the same thing. I'm going to level with all of you. We're not in a position to take this burning elite down. Plain and simple. We can't do it. I don't think, anyway. Not if it's super sentries or super legavulin. Nob's not too bad with a pen nibbed hand agreed. But. Uh, I think there's too high a chance it all goes wrong. Which means I don't have to worry about how the card matches up against the elite. We're just not going to be able to do it. Actually, maybe Legavoon's not that bad. We get to upgrade the Hand Agreed, right? Hmm. We do get an upgrade first. So if I upgrade the Hand Agreed, 25. That'll be 50 when pen nibbed, potentially. Ah, heck, let's give it a try. We can even rest afterwards, right? Kind of card that would have would have made this a lot easier. Something, anything that does area damage, a whirlwind, a cleave, or an immolate. Anything that gives us strength, like an inflame or spot weakness. Um, any efficient one energy damage card, like a twin strike... Pummel? I think we saw a Pummel. Hemokinesis, definitely. Combust would have helped too. <clears throat> but as it is, we face a regenerating knob. Is this going to go well? Pennib says maybe. Oh, the Pummel was in the store. Gotcha. All right, there's the Hand Agreed. We get to play Strike Hand Agreed for 50. Next turn, we can only do 17 damage is the problem. But I have an Impervious, so is that really a problem? Let's 
do some math here. So 20. He'll have 23 health. So I cannot kill next turn with Bash Strike. What I could do is Strike Impervious. Impervious blocks for 30. The knob will attack us for 28. Also a reasonable reason not to use the Ancient Potion. Now we have a chance to draw... We have to draw the Hand of Greed to kill, is the thing? Hmm. I can always just take the hit, the third turn. But I might, might get punished for not using the Ancient Potion here. Certainly a possibility. Easy. Easy every time. Sweet. We make money, and we have KO'd the Burning Elite. That was actually a lot easier than expected. Thanks to the Pen Nib, and only because of the Pen Nib was that reasonable. So I'm glad that's what we spent money on at the store. We got a Bird-Faced Urn healing us for powers played. Currently we have no powers, but we do get offered an offering which does damage, draws cards, and gives energy. There's also a very good headbutt here. Ironclad's answer to deck manipulation, which is a one energy, pretty good attack. That said, it's it's no offering. I like headbutt putting uh, Hand of Greed back on top, especially. Dwarder gets an honorable mention. It's not as good as um, if we had lined up Bash plus Pendib Hand of Greed. We could have we could have killed on turn two with the perfect draw order. Or something. Something like turn one, bash strike, turn two, strike hand agreed would have killed. I'm gonna take this offering. For certain, especially if we're gonna get bonus healing later. Currently we don't have any bonus healing because we have no powers. But I'm gonna pick up powers now, so there's that. Let's get this true grit upgraded early. And then we might actually think about upgrading one of the rares or maybe the battle trance, depending on. Oh man, okay. This run is off to a fantastic start. Toxic Egg says all skills will be upgraded from here on out. So we have our long-term investment kind of really sorted. And we just pass the short-term check. Now we get two more upgrades and two more elites and two more events before we fight Slime Boss. Pretty exciting. I think I am going to upgrade the Battle Trance first. <clears throat> Make our reusable card draw card even better. Although Bash is somewhat of a consideration here. Does ever rest going into two elites? I don't think so. I think we're pretty good. Play this to increment Pendib, destroy the defend. Fine. Play that next turn, probably. Have Legable and have one Vuln. Ooh. Not quite, okay. Perfect. Bash. Strike, strike, strike. So, unfortunately, I can't kill with Strike Pendib because the pen, uh, with uh, Strike Hand Agreed and get the money because the order is wrong here. But check this out. 75 damage from Hand of Greed, 9 damage from Strike. That's a dead enemy. And now I have two Egg Relics. Where's the third? Any skills or powers are upgraded. And I already have a tough choice, Shockwave Plus or Disarm Plus, both very good. Personally thinking the Disarm. Disarm is a one-of-a-kind card on Ironclad, can uh, enable all sorts of things. 
Just don't scramble up those egg relics. Neither of these are that good against the slime boss. I suppose the shockwave's a little bit better. Actually, shockwave's quite a bit better against this. Okay, we'll take the shockwave, actually. And I'll keep the ancient potion for now. More max HP? Yeah, we could also take a heal here, but I think we're we're in such a commanding lead. Let's take some more max health instead. And a bonus relic, the potion belt. Let us meet, letting me hold on to more potions. What a fantastic act one so far. This is truly absurd. Twelve, twelve, twenty-five is thirty-nine. Perfect. Glad this guy rolled low health. Oh wait, no, it's not. Never mind. Can't math. Embarrassed as usual, Baylor. All right. Well, almost dead is basically the same thing as really dead. Classic Baylor math moment. Oops. That's okay. Hmm. I'd rather make the pendip go up. Do this. Shame to shuffle without the hand agreed here. Might be able to go around again, but I don't think I will. Best to just end this fight rather than looking for more money. Get Ginger, making a Sabine to weaken. Good against the slime boss. A really good potion for later, but uh, Heart of Iron gives six block per turn. And what's that? A feed? Allowing us to gain max HP from kills. Only problem is you can't feed and greed in the same fight. They are strictly competitive with one another. So this feed is not necessarily actually helpful. Particularly given that hand agree doesn't exhaust. Though I wouldn't mind a second one, truthfully. Problem is we don't have that many cards that actually get us into... Uh, set up to hand agreed territory in the first place. We're still lacking those fundamental good attacks. But I guess I might as well take feed. I'm not always going to use it, but sometimes we will. And it'll be good in those sometimes. Could rest here if we really felt the need. I'd rather upgrade either the Impervious or the Offering. Don't feel the need to upgrade... I guess we could upgrade Feed, too. It's the other option. That feels really greedy, but... I think we're in pretty good shape to do it. We've got very good potions to get us through this Lime Boss fight. Let's do it. Might have to use Heart of Iron. It's really going to depend on the draw order here. Slime Boss is a fight that is very much about bringing this enemy below half HP nice and quick. Eighty six minus nine is seventy seven. Come on, strike hand agreed. This guy to split multiple times anyway, so we could either strike three times, deal 27 more, bring him to 40. We could try something else. 40 is a pretty good number <clears throat> to split at, actually. Okay. Or 50, not 40. It's still fine, because it's perfectly split in half by <clears throat> hand agreed. Thank you. 
for this gray one first. And I think I'm just gonna kill it outright with Hand Agreed here. And then we can fish for <clears throat> fanciness on the other two. Would like to feed. Let's do it this way. Twice go to 20, split in twain. Let's do that. And greed feed right now. Close. Lower your health. <laughs> Block for 14, stay alive. I'm not going to use a potion unless I really have to here. on one. <clears throat> Still get to keep the potions. Hand agreed next turn. Cool. And look at that potion belt. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Get some very interesting options here. Immolate for big area damage, something we currently lack a little bit. Or two upgraded powers. Juggernaut Plus gives us damage when we block, or Berserk gives us more energy each turn. This is rather interesting Berserk. Rare to see it upgraded for free, and it even heals us for two as we play it. actually really like it. Allows for easy pyramid, no kidding. And it's useful almost no matter what we do. Although I, I, Immolate is very, very good with the pen name. Currently we really don't have an answer to like birds or multiple enemies at all, which is a bit concerning. Well, actually that's not true. I have a full potion belt and that is an answer to anything. Let's grab that Berserk Plus. And we are not offered a Pyramid. What we are offered is Fusion Hammer when I've got two eggs versus Coffee Dripper when I've got Bird Face Turn and Feed. Hammer honestly seems fine. We'd like to upgrade a couple of attacks, but honestly, the really important stuff has been upgraded other than the offering. And I wouldn't mind spending my remaining rests resting. Last option is the curse key, which gives us a curse when we open a non-boss chest. I think this is the worst of the three, actually. As those additional cards weighed, added to the deck will weigh us down big time. So let's grab the fusion hammer. Let's see if we can't put that extra energy to good use. And I also like the idea of going to a shop fairly early here. A couple of good ways to get to two stores. This, go here. And then option A is something like this. Option B is something like this.
So decision point here. But we might as well go to the shop, remove one of these stinky starter cards. There's way too many starter cards to have in Act 2. So it's time we slimmed that number down a bit. My gamer tag's a lie. Thanks for seven months of support. Hope life's going well for you. Given that we have both the feed and the hand agreed, I'm just going to allow them to be sort of opportunistic here. We'll play whichever one makes sense. So I'm not going to skip out on the feed here. We're going to play it for the 12 damage and then try to land the kill with a hand agreed. Easy berserk, by the way. Hmm. Next turn looking a bit awkward, though. Hmm. Not much I can do about that, huh? Wait, one, two, three. Wait a minute. No! <laughs> 50? What do you mean, 50? Damn it. Guess I'll take a Warcry Plus. Don't need these. That's funny. That's really funny. Well, hello, Mr. Shopkeeper. What a beautiful store. Clockwork Souvenir can potentially allow us to get Berserk in play for absolutely free, which is kind of cool. Or block other annoying debuffs early on. Incense Burner can allow us to be t intangible every six turns, particularly good if a deck has two offerings, although I can't afford offering incense. I'm thinking offering clockwork. Oh, I can't do card removal, burning pact, and offering? Hmm. Maybe I'll just do offering, burning pact, card removal. Really get some card draw into this deck now that we have an energy surplus. The more cards we can draw, the better. Almost think the blood for blood is good with two offerings. Almost. Let's do that. Trip's interesting, but I got a shockwave that does the same thing, right? We don't need that. I'm not going to take combust, but I... Am I'm gonna remove another strike. Actually, it might be time to remove defense. Pretty low on attacks that actually do any damage. I'll try to add an attack very shortly here. Or else. Could run into some issues. This might be a good fight for the uh, ancient potion, actually, to block this hex. That's a good idea. This particular enemy can get rather nasty, actually. Basically just shrunked the deck down to nothing, huh? Pretty wild. All things being equal, I'd rather feed than le uh, hand agreed here. Lesson learned, I almost said. Gives me more health to work with, amongst other things. These are not acceptable attack cards. 
Hmm. Armor Plus is rather interesting. Could let me upgrade attacks that I add? I'm not convinced that that's actually any good. So I shan't. We'll go this way and rest first. Feels pretty reasonable. It's all gotten very weird. Hey, and there's the rupture. Whenever you lose HP from a card, gain two strength. There's also a whirlwind, which is probably one of the cards we were looking for. Although without strength to actually gain, it's not that good. So I'm going to take the rupture. Also very much like having a fire potion here. Thinking about two, but I don't think we'll need to. All right, we should be fine here. First up, Gremlin Leader. More like Gremlin... Bleeder. That's going to be your name. Momentarily. doesn't do anything, of course. Still play it for the two health. Instant kill right now with Fire Potion. Tempting. Delicious! Pedro Bijoni asks, does Hand of Greed work on minions? No. The card has the keyword fatal which specifies non-minion enemies. Same is true of feed. Okay, we've got really good blocks. I might grab an Entrench so that Barricade or Calipers become an instant win con. This deck has such ability, such crazy ability to draw through itself. If we find any way to retain block, we can use this card to break the entire game. I'm gonna grab it. I get the other offering upgraded after all. Beautiful. 
2 Offering Plus. We'd love to see it. I think Ghostly Armor is also decent, but we've got enough good block cards otherwise. Don't quite feel the need. I have to say this Berserk has been genuinely very good. Begrudgingly, I will admit this. Don't think I need to use a potion here. Now we can take an Immolate. Be pretty happy with it. We're fighting Collector too, so we'd really like to have a way to kill minions. Being unable to upgrade the Immolate hurts a bit. Not gonna worry about it though. Sundial! Every three times we shuffle the draw pile, gain two energy. We've already shown that it's actually quite easy for this deck to exhaust most of its cards. So being able to potentially use the Sundial to do some kind of infinite energy generation actually sounds pretty fun. Hmm. Ori with two egg relics has got to be pretty good, right? We get to look at five card rewards and troll for upgraded cards. I also really like the boot thingy here. 14 block on turn two. But yeah, I think I think Ori with two relics has to be incredible here. Yeah, we could if we end up with enough health, we can avoid this fire go this way instead. I might do that. <laughs> True Grit plus Demon Form plus Dropkick Pommel Strike plus. Okay, we gotta think a little bit for a minute here. We have the pieces of an infinite. Is Demon Form actually pickable? I think it could be here, but I also think we don't want to take it here. There's another Pummel Strike, too. I think what we want to do are add more cards that could exhaust. We can add another True Grit here. Yeah, Dropkick and Shrug also go infinite. So I'm thinking something like True Grit, Pummel Strike, Dropkick... Shrug. I like the shrug for its blocking properties. Although we could just use entrench with the pummel strikes, right? Some interesting options. Actually, no. I should take the shrug. Beanfire also gets rid of cards pretty quick. It's true. Two True Grits and one Burning Pact is plenty. Evolve could help with his strategy quite a bit. Card Remove does help. What about Evolve? For the late game. And I have Immolate. I'm actually increasingly convinced this deck would like an Evolve. Bit expensive, but hmm. now we just want some some sort of card draw card. 
in the form of a power. Dark Embrace would be just as good. Greetings, Book of Stabbing. I think I just have to take some damage to play the Berserk here. Not playing Berserk seems very unwise. does a very big damage. Well, not that much, I suppose. Let's get rid of as many cards as possible here. Yeah, now we're talking. another card. Do I pen the strike? I suppose that I should. It was bad to not pen hand greed, but you know how it goes. bash here, or I can just keep deleting cards. The smaller this deck gets, the more I can demonstrate. Yeah, let's actually just keep deleting cards here. And demonstrate what we're trying to do in fights now. Get rid of this. Play this. Delete these cards. At this point, we can essentially cycle just the same few cards over and over again. If we want to. Plus Sentinel Plus. If this card is exhausted, gain three energy. Actually, seems pretty okay. I no longer feel like we necessarily need strength in most fights. Let's grab the Sentinel. And yeah, I think we should take... Given the current health situation, which is plentiful, we should go this way. Avoid that rest site, since I'll just have to heal there. makes this fight a little difficult for us. Not impossible by any means, but definitely more challenging than it would be otherwise. Oof. Tough customer. That's okay, I've got answers to you. I figured that might happen. Let's let Orcalcum save us. It's fine. Totally fine. If only I'd purchase it Evolve. I mean, we're still completely okay. And that's why you don't purchase the Evolve, because you can get one for free. But what about second Burning Pack Plus? That's mighty, maybe even better. Mm -hmm. I want card destroying. This is the ultimate in card destroying. Second wins. Cool.
There's the second wind. But to what end? That on top delete one, two, three, four cards. Actually, should probably use the hand agree there. Not gonna stress it. we've got really good sustain at this point. And now we have a fairy saving us when we die, plus an even hundo hit points. And maybe a flex plus that we definitely don't need. I think the deck's in very good shape at this point. Very, very, very good shape. And a dad joke for the crowd courtesy of Hollow. Did you hear that the ironclad graduated at the top of his high school class? It's true. He was even immemorialized in the seer book. I think with 58 health and a fairy in a bottle, we can probably avoid the rest here. Let's grab our red key so that we can be at full health in Act 3. And now, a boss. Maybe a little too... Too obscure for chat, that one. That's fair. Okay, put that on top. Wanna bash. Collector. Torch heads are our minions, so they are not affected by our fatal keyword cards. That's okay. Goal is just get rid of as many of the cards in this deck as possible in one enormous turn. And I think that's going to be second win right now. Get rid of True Grit, Defend, Impervious, Defend, Defend. Close to going shenanigans. To shenanigan land.
I'm gonna get rid of Battle France too. Here we go. So now Shrug, since there are no other cards remaining in the deck, we've exhausted all of the other stuff that's in this 29 card deck. Just this subset of cards left. That means Dropkick must draw Shrug it off, and Shrug it off must draw Dropkick. And thanks to the power of the Sundial, we're actually gaining energy as we do this, not spending it. Not the world's fastest infinite, exactly. Could also use a uh, almost strike. Prop to kick is also a loop we can do once we've blocked for enough. Tasty. Hmm. Brutality plus sure makes that rupture a lot better. Minus one health per turn, but one more card draw every turn. Or we can simply go with a third copy of Offering to help us make that Sundial activate even sooner in fights. How many turns are we taking? If we get Offering number three, not very many is the answer. Yeah, it's ultimately not, le not like we need that Rupture, although it'll be good against uh, Time Eater. Atlas WW says, speaking of all that block, is Body Slam affected by weakness? Yes. Vulnerability? Yes. Or Strength? Yes. It's also, in a sense, the only card that's affected by frail and weakness because the block cards you play are reduced in strength, which makes the base value of the body slam lower, and then it's again reduced by weakness. So if you're weak and frail, body slam is kind of getting double penalized, unless your block is being generated in a way that ignores the frail. We are going to go with third offering here, and holy moly, how about a Pandora's box transform, well, six cards... and get upgraded ones in return. Another very reasonable option, take the Sacred Bar. Look at this potion belt. You're telling me we can double the effectiveness of potions. This fairy in a bottle restores 60% of our health. This heart of iron gives us 12 block per turn. And then whatever's in the Entropic Brew is getting doubled as well. No effect on the Gambler's Brew though. Definitely wouldn't take Astrolabe over the Pandora's box. How does transform work, asks it's Amazing. You get a random card other than the card that you transformed. So there are normally 71 non-starter cards in the character pool. So it's just a 1 in 71 chance for each of those different options. And that means the likelihood you get a particular kind of card is based on how many of that card exist in the pool of characters' cards. So, for example, transforms are relatively unlikely to give you powers because there's not that many power cards. There's way more skills and attacks, so you're more likely to get skills and attacks from a transform. Rarity 2 is ignored, so the rarity is based on the quantity of cards in that rarity, meaning you're most likely going to get an uncommon or rare, least likely to get a common from a transform. Tough call here. I really like the double potions, but let's see what's in the box. Bloodletting plus, Demon Form plus, another True Grit, several exhausting cards. This is going to speed us up even further. Brilliance. Simply brilliance. Do you know that we offer channel memberships now? Support the channel directly here on YouTube for as low as $5 a month and get awesome perks like a custom badge and emojis. But most importantly of all, I'll do exclusive Q&As, uploading a video response only available to members so you can hear your questions read in my buttery voice. Click the join button below this video to get started. Back to the video. Particularly like that disarm. The demon form also gives me a nice answer to time meter here. If anyone was wondering how this deck deals with time meter despite the infinite combo. We have non-infinite ways to win. And uh, bonking time eater will involve one of those. We'll also grab a couple more elites this act, although I feel like we're mostly set to go to act four. I, I don't think the deck really needs much to win from here. Hmm. Thank you. 
this way, I guess. Take two. Don't need to play the offerings in this fight. Bad Spire. Bad Spire? I've not played any of that. Whatever that might be. Bad Spire. Bad. Of all to the void, I have played. I think it's a little convoluted for a uh, deck building roguelite, but it, it does some cool new things with the genre. Not a bad game. Oh man, Mummy Hand is here, Orange Pellets is here, Juggernaut is here, Exhum is here. So many good options. Heck, Impatience Plus seems pretty good too. Another fun potential piece of an infinite combo. This is going to be orange pellets and a card removal, but there's many, many fun options for what to do. Let's lose. Cleave? No, keep cleave. Lose. Immolate? Lose immolate. That's funny. Removed immolate on purpose. Madnesses don't feel like they're useful. Already got the sundial. Could take three leads from here. Guess I might as well, huh? Silly things now. See that. More energy, please. Like way more energy, please. I, I guess. Oh, I removed the no draw? Amazing. Thanks, orange pellets. We're keeping that turn going. Beautiful. I could have played Rupture for two more health there. Amazing. Amazing. Whetstone to upgrade Pummel Strike at that shop was an interesting idea. Though it wasn't a guarantee. Alright, I just fought one of you, let's fight two. Some lunatic, thanks for five months of support. Keep on being a lunatic. You crazy lunatic, you. Hmm. A true grit, a true grit? To make room in hand? Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah. More energy. How much energy have I had this turn? Like 80? 80 energy. What on earth? Genuinely. Okay, on turn... This is turn one, right? On turn one, we deleted everything in the deck except for these cards. Handed over 100 damage and played like a billion cards. Hello? Absurd. Truly absurd. Could add one more shrug here. Double shrug is a fun option. Don't need it, but it's not bad. I think adding more cards at this point just slows us down. Unless those cards draw cards. More than one card. So I don't think I'm going to bother adding much of anything that doesn't draw at least two cards. Second wind all of this? Yep. Sure do. Kick Burning Pact Infinite? Hello? Delicious! B statue gives a potion after every combat. Now I do somewhat regret not uh, taking the sacred bark. Don't know that any of these cards actually do anything. Not even the limit break, which could get us to 999 strength very quickly. Does it actually help us? Beat over money? Yes, I think max health are worth more than money. At the rate that both hand agreed and feed give them to you. I think feed is the better reward. Kind of way to maybe mentalize it. A hundred gold or sixteen max hit points. Bearing in mind that no way to purchase hit points gives you that that kind of deal, right? A mango is three hundred gold for fourteen hit points. Strawberry is one hundred and fifty gold for seven. Fruit juice is about a hundred for five. So a hundred for sixteen, very good deal. None of the above, by the way, for the cards. Agree doesn't work on these guys until the final one is killed.
Elixir lets us exhaust any number of cards in our hand. That's the easy, breezy, really fast way to go infinite. Just delete all the cards that we don't want to have all at once. I felt like I needed more block. We could take a rage here. I really don't feel like we need it, though. At this point, adding additional cards is mostly unhelpful. This is interesting, though. We won't use the conventional strategy to win this fight, I don't think. Because those burns are a bit of a problem, actually. You dare. 63. Bye. Delicious. Speaking of max health, here's the mango for 14 more, putting us at a whopping 137. And if we want, we can take another copy of Berserk, which actually sounds hilarious. I've never had a double Berserk deck, but uh, I have to say Orange Pellets is d and Birdface Dern is definitely the time to take double Berserk. So let's do it. More Berserking. Got all three keys. Ooh, I am immune. Healing anyway, okay. Further be chunkied. No need for any of this. Warcry is vaguely useful, but only vaguely. We believe we have over 140 max HP and counting. Pretty wild. Unlike this turn one, which is slightly awkward here. No answer to the Reptomancer's. Opening salvo. We're very much up to our draw order next turn to avoid a total disaster here. No sign of offering yet. Can change that. Get rid of that. Uh oh. 
Panic. There we go. Just needed to find offering there. Focus on those daggers that are doing the big damage here. Got cleave coming up that we do. So it'll be 15 to all. More than that, actually. Just go to Battle France. There's the cleave. Easy. the money on that one, just because it was a perfect kill. Or a clean kill. That could use a body slam. Again, the drop kick. It's plenty of damage under the right circumstances. Don't need any of that. Twelve cards, match them to keep them. Corruption plus, you say? Don't want to clash. No luck on the corruption. Dang. Got close, though. On your Romania, thank you so much for 18 months of support. Keep on keeping on, friend. Zero, huh? Very well. It really is a little bit absurd. slam, but upgraded this time. Still not good enough to pass. It's my time eater. With 145 HP. Wow. We are a chunky ironclad. We even got rupture turn one to make sure all three offerings give us bonus strength. That's right. We found two offerings normally and the third one was store-bought. Exactly correct. Careful about card count here. This one, too. Perfect. And the bash. Remove all the debuffs. Drop kick. Disarm. Get rid of this card. Get rid of this card. Let's turn one against Time Eater. We got rid of 
seven cards. Played a whole lot. Tater's a lot less interested in playing along here. Any powers left, or did I play them all? Looks like I played them all. Still, you're pathetically weak. Bash, we need to keep Not this. Not this either. This this get rid of the burning pact. need the pummel strike, do I? Hmm. Guess I could also give up one feed here. We'll do that. Here's where Time Eater would heal to half and remove their debuffs. But only if they're allowed to, which they are not. Thanks to 23 strength from the demon form and the rupture, we had relatively little problem with that particular foe, even though we weren't allowed to go infinite. And this boss should be comparatively no problem. So we do have to take a little bit of damage up front. Ooh. A lot of damage up front. I've got health to spare. Profitable. Okay, 
Nux Whites. Ching. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread. We felt that the room is this, the heart of the spire, the source of all this cash and health. Get ready your big pockets, bigger stomach, and proceed onwards into Act 4. We schnooze back up to a full 149 hit points. And then we have 473 health for this boss fight, allowing us to bottle any one power. We could bottle our demon form. Or better yet, bottle our rupture, actually, is kind of amusing. We can remove a card. We can take boat thingy for block on turn one. I like the draw potions. I like the current potions in general. Another chance at limit break. Honestly, not a lot of it matters here. I'm thinking boot thingy and a removal, or boot thingy and the tornado. Never saw a dark embrace or even a feel no pain this run. It's kind of in kind of interesting, and the only corruption was in the mansion key. What would I like to remove? Bash has to stay. Cleave can go. Cleave, you are now extraneous. Fire breathing seems kind of fun. But I'm not going to be able to draw the statuses over and over. So there's no point. Alright, nerds. Bring it on. Turn could be a little awkward. Two burns directly on top of the draw pile. Only three mystery draws, but look at these draws, they're good. Now I can second win the stuff. Easy. first. Yes.
Guess I don't need to hand greet you, huh? But I will. Bag of marbles! Apply one vuln all enemies. Could take an ancient potion for artifact. Kind of irrelevant with the orange pellets. And three commons for our final card award. That's fine. Highest max HP I've had with a seated run. Way more than you'd expect. 453. I think that's a score that can be beaten, too. I think 500 plus is doable with the exact right run. So for that to happen, you need to be able to be dual wielding upgraded feed. So you can eat every single enemy you come across. You've also got the face of cleric giving you one max HP at the end of each fight. And you've got prayer wheel and singing bowl, allowing you to skip card rewards at the end of combats for two max health apiece. So in each combat, you eat one or more enemies for four max HP, and you skip two cards for four max HP total, and you gain one from face of cleric. So minimum nine hit points per floor. Sorry, Hand of Greed. Scheme inform. She probably wanted to put that on top, huh? Now we want to intentionally leave one of these in the deck. I'll play one, though. use the potions. Thinking about when we'll use the elixir here. So I can just use that to delete any cards in hand, right? Statuses are going to go in the draw pile. Do I avoid drawing all five statuses next turn? Is that a thing I'm allowed to do? Technically, that kind of gets me there. Grit in the drum pile, that's not really good enough. Hmm. I 
think we're just gonna have to take the hit. That's kind of how I'm feeling. use the thing next turn. Okay, so let's just get rid of things we don't want. Okay, that'll have to do. That'll have to do. Yeah, in this turn where we can't do anything, it's actually the, the free turn anyway. Easy. And then there's the Swift Potion, so we actually do get to do the thing. Kind of. And we even kept damage. Good. We can upgrade the Pummel Strike, too. What are you? Mayhem could destroy us by playing Burning Pact. is with Weaken already. Fair enough. Easy peasy. GG, Mr. Hart. You're tasty. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.